I'm Gordon Smart, I'm with Sam Fenders today at Vinyl Guru in Newcastle. We're with Barber International and Scots Menswear, that's what's brought us together today, Sam. It is. And vinyl, by the looks of it. It is. Here, listen, you know, I was once told when I was younger that the best place to interview somebody is where they're comfortable, right? In a kitchen, or maybe around the pool table in your flat, or for you, probably in a record store, I would think. Aye, yeah, it is pretty comfortable, I would say. How are you doing? I'm great, mate. Good to see you. I can't touch you, I can't hug I you. I can't hug you. It's ridiculous. I was just saying earlier on, the last time I saw you was the last proper gig I went to. In Where was that? North Shields at the King Street Working Men's Club. That was the best and worst day of my life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it was because we, we got told in the morning that we went number one and everyone just jumped around yeah. and went mental. And then uh, we had uh, I had like me, all my family and friends turn up at this King Street gig and then just like a, a ray of every person from, like everyone from Shields basically outside the door. Yeah. Uh, and. We didn't even like, we were like so excited and wanted to celebrate with my family. And I wanted to you'd see me dad. I just didn't get moved. Like, I got, because obviously it's not like, you know, it's not proper venue with a big backstage or anything like that. It's an old social club. So, like, I literally came off side stage and it was just like, got absolutely annihilated by everyone. To be fair, it was probably the most surreal day of my life, right? I turned up at a working men's club in Newcastle, met Alan Shearer, did a meat raffle. <laughs> 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 and then worked behind the bar pouring pints at your own Euro work. Oh my god, I. It's been, what, I don't know, nearly 18 months since then, and I'd like to say a lot has happened, but not a lot's really happened, has it? How have you yeah, coped with the last 18 months, Sam? But I've reverted back to being like a 14 year old, and but I've been doing some writing. And Making music. Don't play it down. You've got you've got an album in 45 yeah, tracks. You've got to here. play it down at all. Up your like Barber International Street. Yeah, yeah, up the up the <laughs> up the, the brand new t-shirt. Oh, yeah. I mean it must have been pretty mad for you, right? Because I've got this recollection in my head of looking out the window of the studio in Leicester Square and another surreal moment was seeing you walking down a red carpet with Declan McKenna cuddling out and John, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then for for 18 months you've been back in UK. Was, was that was that for was you've that for Rocket, Rocket Man? Man? Yeah. Oh god. So to step off that mad Dino was there. roller coaster, I Dino was always there, didn't he? But to get off that roller coaster and then suddenly just be back at home like a 14 year old boy again, that must have been a bit of a culture shock, wasn't uh, it? It was, a, it was a bit of a crash, like, you sort of crash land. I mean, we crash landed at home when we got back from the tours, like, at, at the Christmas of 2019. You know, we crash landed there for like a month and that was just sort of like, you kind of come home, see all your mates, see everyone that's ever known you, <laughs> and then, uh, we had to like sort ourselves up, pull ourselves around before we went back into our end. And it was the same sort of crack. We were so excited for this like massive arena tour. It was like the biggest tour I was ever going to play, the biggest shows we were ever going to play in my life. And it was a day before it started, was the start of the lockdown. And I was like, and I was so like mentally prepared. I'd got myself in that place where I was like, I finally kind of accepted. I was, I was kind of like going, no, you didn't deserve to be here and do this get out there, smash it. And then I just, it was like, lockdown, and I was like, I don't know, it's only gonna be like a month long, this man. You know, it'll come and go. And then it was like, here we are. Did you manage to keep your discipline though? Did you keep some no, kind of structure? No, absolutely no discipline whatsoever. <laughs> I've like, I've, I have been the most unfit I've ever been in my life, but I'm turning it round for the right. summer. Can you get yourself ready? <laughs> I'm turning it round for when I come back. I have Mate, just, summer bodies are built in winter. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I'm starting late, but like I, no, I just, the discipline completely out the window. So for the first two months, I was just like in the house going like crackers. And then I just, you know, it was like a one man party for like two months. I've spoken to a lot of musicians during this time though, and some people feel hugely creative because they had time to switch off. They don't have the pressures of playing yeah, gigs yeah. to sit and write. Did it help you and did it provide creativity in any way? Yes, in the, in the, in the sense of it gave us time and space to just write. But no, it didn't like, it didn't, weirdly enough, like I kind of thought, oh God, like I'm gonna have loads. Every one of the labels like, oh, you got, I bet you've got loads to talk about. I mean, there's loads going on in the news and all of this. But I think because of the nature of the time and it being such a like stagnant time that I just like, I couldn't write about COVID. I was like, you know, the last thing people are gonna wanna hear when we get out of this is a song in COVID. Like, there's no way that like, you're gonna go, you, no one's gonna jump around to a festival and like, be like, <laughs> I was stuck in for a year, you know what I mean? It's just not happening. I don't want to ever hear about it again. <laughs> so did you deliberately write positive <clears throat> tunes then? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. No, I, I, I actually started writing a lot about being a kid. 
kind of went back over and like, I was like, ah, what was the more interesting wild times in my life? And then I just sort of started writing about being like 17 again and yeah. being a kid and, yeah, and the sort of, all of the stuff that you, you, with hindsight, you see everything in a complete different light, you know, after 10 years or something, you know, I kind of look back on all of those times with, it's that um, real sort of nostalgic, it's almost that bittersweet sort of sad, happy thing that you get when you think about being a kid. So I just sort of started writing about that. You've got some bangers up your sleeve, are you? Quite yeah. Happy with that. No, it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing with them, man. I'm buzzing. There's so many tunes. Like, See, when you get to that point then, when you've got what you think is like a, a long short list, as you describe it, do you send it to people in the industry or other musicians to, to get a like a, a sounding board to see what they think of it? Because you'd met, I think you mentioned Weller had had a listen to a couple yeah, of Yeah, I sent them Paul Weller. Aye. And I was like... He's a fierce critic, to be he fair. He is a fierce, he's, he's really funny, man. He was just like, so, like some of the songs, he was just like, one of the songs he was like, last time I got home, he was like, Stan Cow Classic. I don't know how I'd feel about Weller giving me a critique of my work. I mean, I'd walk down the stairs and he'd be sitting in the cafe downstairs and go, what are you wearing? What are you wearing today? I'd still come to terms with the <laughs> fact that I even talked to Paul Weller or talked to Elton John or whatever. Just so do you like, wake up the next day with a fear? And you think, <laughs> anxiety I've all the time, the line there. every night, man. But like bringing it back to Vinyl Guru as well, and we're talking about you being happy in places like this, do you still get the chance pre-lockdown to have a rifle through record shops and buy a bit of vinyl? Pre-Covid, yeah, I used to love it. Did, did you pick up your vinyl habit from your dad? Because that's where I got mine. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Decent so collection? We, like, we apparently had an amazing vinyl collection uh, full of like, you know, first presses of every, I imagine, this is the way it sounds anyway, but when my brother talks about it, you know, like all these like, you know, probably these vinyls that would like be on Antiques Roadshow for like a grand. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, up there now for 650 quid Beatles original. Apparently my dad, my brother says like when CDs came round, my dad just like got them all and hoid them at the backyard. <laughs> no. We were talking earlier as well about Elton John and I think he still gets the top 40 delivered to him every week. Yeah. So do you share a bit of music with him? Does he send you some stuff? I've, I've been there when he's, He's, he's neurotic about it, it's mad. Like, he, he, I've been there when he's like just, he gets his sheets and he gets the top 40 in and he sits with his highlighter and he goes through things and highlights. That. It's amazing, man. It's ama like, he's, I love how dedicated he is to like, to just music in general. Like, he's so, he's such a big fan. Is there one particular 12 inch record that you would run out of a burning house with because you wouldn't want it to be lost in a fire? I actually think the ones I'd run out of a house with were the first ones my mom gave us. I mean, mom had like, like she's just got some record, like it's not actually even about the record itself, it's more just it was like the first record I got off my mum and it was like, it was uh, just a single actually, it was The Stranglers. When you gave me hypersonic missiles in a pizza box with a ticket from the pizza shop written on it, I mean that, that and it had a couple of little serviettes in it as well, little napkins. Aye. That, that felt like a special thing to have. It was, you, 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 before, are, you, know? you are some of the few that got that. It wasn't a gift. You know, there's only there's a spattering of people who have them pizza box vinyls, like Aye. with the, the receipts. That them receipt books, man, when I was writing in them, it was like it took us back to working in the pub. Hi. I worked in a, I worked in a restaurant for a little bit as well. Probably the worst waiter ever on the planet. <laughs> I'm sure he'll uh, the guy who runs it will will uh, confirm that. But I, I used to work in um, a little Italian restaurant on the fish key, like. And this is always writing on a notepad, so it was a nice touch, I thought. Good tips. Me? <laughs> I've Not never been tipped in my life. <laughs> never. Now listen Sam, the reason we're here is to talk about Barber International. You've designed your own range of clothes. You've reached that point in your career. And I'm wearing one of your tops right wow. now. Look at this. So what's the pro how does it work then? What's the process when you get involved in making clothes then? Do you play a part in the fabrics, the colours? Well, how does it work? I, th I think I put a bit of input in, yeah. but I'm definitely not going to take all the credit. Dutch kids have balloons in the parking lot. The good I, I love them sort of pastel -y colours, you know. All my guitar colours that I pick are always them pastel -y sort yeah, of. Light blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surf greens. Yes. <laughs> and like, you know, and, like, and, and Daphne blue. I love it, man. Like, I'm so Did you enjoy I mean, here's the thing, like, you've obviously learned about a colour already, so you've well, I've been a learning process. I've learned something new every yeah. day, yeah. yeah. I, lo I know what Etro is now, and, <laughs> and I've got a, a clothing range. In all fairness, it will help you articulate what you want on albums and stuff. If you're talking about artwork and, you know, the process you've gone through here might help you create different art. Uh, so, yeah, no, no, it's been, a, it's been a hell of a journey, like. Sam, I think this is actually quite a difficult question, but how would you describe your style? Genuinely, it's 
comfy. Aye. Like, and I know that's like not cool at all. But also on stage, it's a comfort thing, isn't it? You know, you want to be feeling relaxed. Yeah, well, I, I, presume. I, I, I hate, yeah, I, I don't like anything that makes us uncomfortable because I like I like to get, move about a bit, you know. And well, I was looking through the realist stuff you've got on it, it's all quite loose. So, well, that's so I can do Bruce Lee stuff in it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> just so I can keep up the Kung Fu. <laughs> right. Sam, thanks so much for having me in Newcastle. It's lovely to see you. Thank I you, want man. to give you a big proper hug. I know, I, I, I want to give you a, I'm going to choose Once some vinyl Once we've got vaccines. Let's do it. I'll, let's I'm going to rugby tackle you. Should we uh, choose some vinyl for each other as well? Let's, let's do look, that. Let's look at the top shelf. <laughs> <laughs>